Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn how to cut out patterned paper using your SDX125. The technique I'm going to teach you today can be used on any model of scan and cut you have. We are going to call it the acetate trick. Now, I'd like to do a couple things first. I want to acknowledge all of you, my subscribers, my viewers, Thank you so much because my channel, The Paper Chef YouTube channel, has just reached 18,000 subscribers. So I'm very grateful to all of you for watching my channel and for supporting my channel, uh, especially my channel patrons from the Patreon site who support my channel on an ongoing basis. Thank you all for your support, your comments, your likes, and your shares of my videos, which helped my channel grow. All right, second acknowledgement is the other day I did a tutorial and it was on the Flowering Foils Specialty Designer Series Paper. Now I've taught the pencil trick many, many times using a number two pencil where we trace things. And in that tutorial, I traced these very difficult flowers. And here, I'm just gonna kind of show you that. We're not cutting these today because we've already done that, been there, done that. We're doing something new. These flowers are very difficult for the scan and cut to interpret to understand because the scan and cut needs to have well-defined lines to be able to scan something. So here's a piece, here's a piece of paper on top where I traced the flower in a pencil. And then we put that flower in, we put this sheet into the scanner. This is just a piece where the flower is not traced. It would not be recognized. Okay. So after that tutorial, one of my crafty friends here, uh, her name is Becca M. She said that she cuts out these flowers using acetate. Okay, well, I, I've used acetate many times on this channel for different things. We've, we've created stamping masks. We've created shrinky dinks. We've done all kinds of things, but I didn't really think of using it for this because I thought, I thought maybe that would be the same thing as a pencil trick, but it's not, and here's why. So thank you, Becca M, for suggesting the acetate. Here's why. Okay, so if you, let's just go back to what I did eight months ago. Eight months ago, I showed how to cut out this, this designer series paper. It's called Mosaic Mood, specialty designer series paper. It comes in 12 by 12 sheets. I showed how to trace. This is the most difficult paper Stampin' Up! could have ever invented for scan and cut users. Not that they were thinking of us. It's a beautiful design. But this is the most difficult paper I've ever cut out with a scan and cut in my life. When I, when I did this tutorial with the CM350, it's no problem because the CM350, the Scan and Cut 2, has a resolution of only 300 dots per inch. I was able to use the pencil trick and I was able to, this, this is one I used with the pencil trick, I was able to trace around these hummingbirds just fine and cut them out. Okay, just fine, but then it presents another problem. So the problem is when you go to erase the pencil later, your, your, my little wings of my birds got bent. Okay, and you know, so that was just one little problem. Okay, so really that was the only problem. I just had to erase the marks. That's a lot of extra work. Um, and also that my little wings got bent. So then I tried the same pencil trick with the, with the STX-125. And here's the problem. It has a 600 dots per inch scanner. And it recognizes not just my pencil marks, but all these little dots around them. So it came out very jagged. See, it didn't come out smooth. It came out, my bird, my bird came out jagged. Okay, so the pencil trick doesn't always work especially when you're lining your pencil, even if you put a well-defined line around this with a pencil, the problem still is that there's all these little bits and pieces in this kind of paper, and it's still going to not see a continuous line. The scan and cut won't. So I, I'm using this acetate trick that Becca M mentioned on this Mosaic Mood. It's called Mosaic Mood Specialty Designer Series Paper, and here's how it works. And if you wanna get acetate, just use my links, support my channel, and just go to Amazon and get cheap, cheap acetate. I am literally using, because I'm a craft hoarder, I am literally using the old transparency film, and that's what I'm gonna to link to. It's very cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. So I'm linking to just cheap acetate that you're gonna use for tracing. So the trick involves you get a Sharpie marker and you're going to put your acid you're gonna put your piece of acetate over over your whatever you're drawing on, whatever you want to draw around, and you're going to just trace around the bird. Make sure you give the bird a nice wide beak because it. Uh, when I tried tracing a small beak, it was kind of too brittle. So give it a nice large beak. It just holds up better 
when you're trying to put a dimensional behind it later, like which is a foam adhesive, when you're trying to put something behind it, so make sure you have an extra little wide beak. Okay, so I'm tracing with a black Sharpie marker. That's all I'm doing. This is a lot less work in the end because I didn't have to fight with it than it would have been if I had used the pencil trick. Also, like I'm saying, with the SDX 125, the scanner is actually too sensitive for the pencil trick. So this is like the only way we're gonna get these birds to cut out smoothly. Unless you know of a different way, hey, I'm always open to new ways. That's, that's how we learn is by sharing techniques. And I love that about my channel because you have all challenged me so much to figure out new techniques by the questions you ask me and by the things that you, the, the comments you make, I'm always being like challenged to figure out new things. Okay, so there we go. That could be a little smoother, right? Let's put the little line a little smoother. We don't want to bump in my wing. And I think that one's not quite connected right there. So we're just going to connect that. So that's all you're going to do. And it doesn't matter if you make it a little bigger because because it all looks good in the end. We'll make just make your lines smooth. Don't make them jagged. Because I'm going to show you some other tricks in this. You know, there's always extra little things in here that you're going to learn. Okay, so I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator after all. So I'm going to show you this whole paper. I don't have a stack of paper. I when I get my paper, I cut it all up, and I don't I don't I don't even think I even have one full sheet left. Maybe one full sheet. That's all I have. But I do have some card bases to show you. So before we stick this on the mat. Okay, and I have to explain the whole technique. I just want to show you these while I have before I cut them all apart or before I cut this one apart and I have one as a backup. So these are just, this is the Mosaic Mood Designer Series paper. Why is it so difficult? Because it's made up of little tiny bits. It's double-sided and why is it specialty? Look at the little gloss on it. Super, super cool. Okay, I don't know if all these card bases I have here represent all the sheets of paper so I'll just turn them over just in case. Okay, so you have this, so you have your beautiful birds. Let's make sure I keep the right bird out for this. The one I just traced is this one. I'm going to keep that out because we need to use that again. And look at these beautiful tiles. And you have all kinds of coordinating colors like uh, mint macron, uh, so saffron I believe it is, uh, very vanilla, terracotta tile, blushing bride, uh, garden green, soft suede. So anyway, this paper will be linked if you want to get it. It's, it's just like to dye for paper. They do not make dyes or anything to go with this, this suite. There is a punch that coordinates and I'll show you the punch and stamp set later. But how cool is this paper? Okay, it came out in last year. It's gonna only be available till June 2nd. The paper definitely, because all of our papers retire when the new catalog comes about. All right, now with the scan and cut SDX 125, you have to load the mat in one direction. Okay, so we're gonna, that's why I'm putting the arrow that way. So here's the trick. Here's the acetate trick as I know it. When I tried to use the acetate like this, I tried to do this. First first time I tried, I'm going to let you learn from my mistakes. I put the little piece down. I put this on top. I went like this. I scanned the whole thing in. And what did I get? I got a whole bunch of... It still didn't even... It didn't even get my shape. Okay? In other words, it didn't even get my shape of the bird, even though I had traced the hummingbird perfectly with a Sharpie marker. It still picked up all these jagged edges around the, the outside. So I said, hmm... Okay, I'm going to do what I do with the shrinky dink. So this is what I did. So here's the trick. You're going to put the acetate down and you're going to you're going to tape it. You're going to tape it down because it cannot move because you're going to see why. And tape it down. Because you're going to want to know exactly where you put it. So use some painters tape. And you're not going to scan it like this because you're going to end up with all these dirty bits all around your mat like I have. You're going to take the piece that came behind your transparency film and this is going to be loose. This is going to go under there, but it's going to be loose. In other words, it's not taped down. It's just under there for scanning purposes. Okay, so then that's that's what you do. You take your white piece of paper. Now we're going to scan this in. Now we're going to get a nice good a nice scan. We're not using this yet. We're going to use this later. We're not scanning that in because it, it, it interferes with the scan and cut. And, you know, I learned that the hard way, but this is why I'm teaching you guys what I learned because you're my crafty friends and now I'm saving you lots of time. So I did four at once. I'm just going to show you my screen. I'm going to, well, actually, I'll just load the map, and then I can show you my screen. I'm going to go back and, um, let's see. Come on, go in. Oops, oops, oops. You get to see that my mat does not always load straight. But this is my good mat. I have a few good mats. 
Some don't load at all anymore because I've used them so much. I think that one's going to do it. Yay! Please load. Please stay loaded. All right. And I might even, for good measure, put a little piece of tape on the other side of the acetate, but not on the white part, not on the white piece of paper, because I need to pull that out. To give you the big picture, we're going to be pulling out this white piece that we use just for scanning. We're going to insert the other paper. But I just want to show you my screen because I did this with four birds, four hummingbirds, and I'm going to go ahead and turn out my light now so you can see the screen better. And I was able to do four at once, which was really cool. And not only that, a little bonus to doing four at once, tracing four at once, was then my, my scanner, I mean my paper, had the same pattern repeated over it. I used a full sheet I had earlier. There were birds on the sheet of paper, just so you know what I'm talking about. There were a bunch of birds up here I traced and I cut them out and then I moved and then I did it again and I had I had the same four birds so I was able to get eight birds and you're going to get to see at at the end of this video all of the projects I made using the ones that didn't rip <laughs> anyway all the projects I made using these hummingbirds so anyway you're going to get to see that so that just wanted to show you my screen so you can kind of get an idea and I'll show you my my template as well that you can reuse over all right so I'm going to just go back to home so here we are. You've scanned in your, you've traced your birds. You've, as you, whatever, you traced your roses. I mean, this will work on the roses. It will work on anything that you want to trace. You've traced something. You've, you've made a well-defined black line. So now you're ready to scan. You're going to turn on your machine and what you're going to see is pattern and scan. You're going to click scan and we want to directly cut out this bird. So we're going to hit direct cut. Normally I would do many of these at once, but we're going to just do one to teach you. So we have a place to store. It needs a place to store this data temporarily. We're going to say store it on your machine. You could store it online. Because this image is up at the top of the mat, I can just go ahead and say scan 12 by 6 because my hummingbird's up near the top. Now if I have a lot of hummingbirds, I would have to use the 12 by 12 scanning area. So let's just say 12 by 6. Even though we're going to use a colorful bird, it doesn't matter. What we're trying to recognize right now is just Sharpie marker outline. So we are gonna use black and white recognition mode. Never use color recognition mode unless you really, I mean, just never use it. 99% of the time you get away with black and white. Only when black and white recognition mode doesn't work do you try color. It takes way longer. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit start and it's gonna scan in. Oh yeah, my lever was set to two. It's gonna, I'm setting my lever back to one because it doesn't need thick paper and I'm gonna hit start. Okay, you're not gonna get the scan, scanner lever message probably because you know, you're, your scanner lever should just be set to one most of the time. But I was cutting out thick cardstock earlier and it was set to two. All right, so here it is. It did a beautiful job scanning in my bird. So now we say okay, and we're going to get rid of all this extra bit. So that there's a few ways to get rid of the extra bit. So we're gonna first just select just the area where the bird is, and that gets rid of all the dirty parts of my mat, all the outside parts. You saw the little black dots Okay, we're gonna also do, so we made a selection, that's one way to get rid of them. Another way to get rid of them is to ignore object size. The bird's a couple inches, so you're safe to say, ignore anything up to an inch and a half and you're, you'll get rid of all the extra little bits. And that's, I'm just gonna say okay because I know I don't have extra bits. And the third way is after you say okay, the third way of getting rid of extra bits is you can, you can go into edit and you can trash them. I don't have anything to trash here, but watch my other tutorials and you'll see how I trash objects I don't want to I don't want to cut out. Okay, so we're not actually we're not actually going to cut this out though. We're going to say okay. And now we're going to we're going to say cut, but we're not actually going to start. Okay, watch. We're going to say cut. But do we want to cut a piece of plastic? No, 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 crafty friends. We don't want to cut a piece of plastic, not that, unless we're making a stamping mask which is we've made before. Um, let's see if I have any of those. I probably have one here to show you. Like I've made them for the moose and the dog. and So we would cut out plastic. My table is too much of a mess, so we're not gonna get into that. But you would cut out plastic if you were creating a stamping mask that's reusable. But in this case, we don't wanna cut out this transparency film. No, 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 we wanna cut out the bird. We wanna cut out the paper that I just had here. Is this it? This is it. So what we want to do is this, very important. We want to, first of all, we want to take out this piece of white paper that was just for scanning. And we want to insert, we want to insert this paper. Now when you insert it, make sure it sticks out the side. 
okay? You'll see why. So we're going to, let me, let me, maybe I need my light. Let's see if we need my light. Okay, so we're gonna maybe turn this down a little bit. Okay, so here's the trick. This is really the essence of the trick. You're taking your, it doesn't have to stick out the side. You just have to be able to tape it before you remove the acetate. I don't think I made it big enough to stick out the side, but we'll see. Yeah, I might have. Okay, good, good, good. So we're not removing the acetate yet because it has. we have to know exactly where to put this bird. We're putting the bird right under the exact spot where we drew over it. All right. So wiggle that around. I have to make sure I'm not removing the acetate. All right, good. Okay, do you see what I did there? So I stuck this piece in there and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't care if it has a little bit of a white belly, but I mean, you can fix it as much as you want. Of course, if you had a bunch of birds on this paper, it would be easier to fix because you're lining them all up at once. Just make sure that beak has a nice big outline around it. Okay, good. I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna take the little piece sticking out. Here's my trick, and this is just kind of learning the hard way. I'm gonna tape my piece of Mosaic Mood Specialty Designer Series paper down. Okay, now like a Band-Aid, <laughs> you can rip this one off. You need to get rid of your acetate. Okay, you can rip it off, just hold that there. Now, you always need painter's tape for this trick because this, this thing cannot move, right? This, this bird can't move. And I don't care how sticky your mat is, use painter's tape because it's not sticky enough for this to not, to, it'll move a little bit and you need to be in its X spot. Painter's tape is great because it comes right off. All right, there we go. So what we're doing now is cutting, we're gonna cut. Okay, let me turn out that light. Let's get back to the settings. We are, we are cutting out the bird. Let's hit start. Okay, so now I have a CM, I mean, I have an SDX 125. It has auto blade technology. It will know what blade depth to use. It'll cut around the bird. Now, if you're using a scan and cut two, for example, maybe you're using an a CM model, then you have to set the blade depth. You're probably gonna need a four or five for this thick designer series paper. You're gonna need a four or five of a blade depth, okay? Because it's thicker than your normal designer series paper, which needs a th blade depth of three. Okay, let's see what happened. And we're still not done. We have another trick to show you. So let's do this. Well, first of all, let's make sure before I pull off the tape that it cut all the way through. And it did, it did a beautiful job. No pencil marks to erase, okay? So this is what I like about it better than using my other trick from before, is I don't get any jagged edges getting recognized. With my pencil trick, I do. I don't have to erase the marks and then risk bending my bird like I do with the pencil trick. Uh, so, so it's a smooth cut. So, I mean, there's just, I just love this acetate trick way better than the pencil trick. But I mean, use whatever tool is easiest at the time. Because we, we do, like we're crafters and we wanna like save time. So let's, so sometimes this trick might not be easier for you. And if you don't have acetate, of course, by all means, use your pencil trick. But go get shrinky dink material if you don't have acetate, you can get that anywhere. But I'm saying that this, this stuff that I'm using right now, it's called, you know, transparency film. Remember the old overhead transparencies and like you turn on the lamp? That's what, the, that's what this is, transparency film. All right, so before I move this, I need to take, what I'm gonna do is show you how to make a layer around your bird. So you make a layer in a coordinating color. I'm just gonna use this piece of terracotta tile I have. And I'm just, I just left it there for a second to make sure I put this in the general area. So here's a good place to put it. I wanna make sure I have enough, that this, that this piece of cardstock that I'm putting there is gonna replace this, but I also wanna make sure that I have enough room to make, a little, to make this a little bigger. So just put it there, but also we, maybe I have to cut a little piece off because it's kind of sticking out the side of my machine over here, so let's. Snip, 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 here we go. So I have, now I have a piece that'll fit right there. So I wanted to make sure I have a piece of terracotta tile that's gonna fit right there. Okay, so let's pull the machine back, show you the settings. I'm making an outline distance around my bird. I've tried different outline distances, thick and small, and I think, oh, and you can do the tape if you want, but you don't really need to because this part, it doesn't matter if it kind of moves out of the place because it just needs to be in the general area, but I still put a little piece of tape there for good measure. All right, so here we are. All right, crafty friends, we are going to make an outline. And this is kind of where the power of this machine comes in. Cause you're like, 
Well, I could have cut the darn bird quicker than what you just showed me. Yes, but you can't do this. So we're going to go back. So we have our, now we have a piece of terracotta tile there, some, some cardstock. We're going to hit the back button and we're going to go to the outline distance. And you're going to click on the outline distance and make it 0.04. If you want, you could use 0.08, but the problem is 0.08. If you're using a template, which I promised to show you in a minute, it's buried over here. If you're using a lot of birds and you try a 0.08 template, then the birds will start melt. It'll be, they're too close together. And then you're going to end up cutting some of the birds off. I'll show you that in just a minute, but I can't right now because of the camera view. So just use a 0.04, trust me. If you use a 0.08, it, it's fine if you have one bird, but if you have a lot of birds, it's, they're gonna fuse together because your outline distance is too big. So point, and I'll put this in the description as I always do. I'll put some settings in the description. Hit okay, hit okay. okay now we're gonna hit cut. So now we're gonna cut a bigger bird, the outline of a bigger bird. We're gonna hit start and we're making a cardstock bird for the layer. And then I'm gonna show you my projects on how I layered the birds. I used both terracotta tile, which I'm using now, and I used crushed curry. Crushed curry is another color that coordinates. Oh, I forgot to tell you crushed curry earlier, I don't, I think, but that's one of the other colors that coordinates with this suite. Okay, so mosaic mood. Let's see how the, the mood is going. All right, we got this, let's see how the, Oh, look at that. So before I take off the cardstock, I always make sure it cut all the way through. And if not, I can send it back through again while the, while the paper is still in the right spot. So we're going to pull that off with the spatula. Okay, I'll remove the mat later. Don't want to make my crafty friends wait. I'm going to show you what we just did and why we just did it. And now you can see the power of using the acetate trick because you get a smooth cut around the first bird. You get a smooth cut around the next layer and you can just go on with infinite layers, each being... 0.04 bigger than the one prior to it and you can create lots of layers this way now you can do offsets like this offsets like that or in some cases I just centered the bird in the in the middle okay so let's show you the examples now of what you do with this technique or why we did all this what now what cool projects can you make using the mosaic mood suite and this and this technique all right so here we go and let me see if I need my light and test the light. Maybe we can use the light. Okay, so here's, we have in this suite of products, first I promised to show you my template. My template is this. This is the template I used earlier where I cut four birds. And then I was able to move this template to another part of the mat and cut out four more birds. I'm not even sure which way this faces, but you get the idea. Okay, if you mess up your line, you just make a bigger line around the outside of that line. And my template made me a bunch of smooth birds. I cut out eight altogether, and when I was, one of them ripped, and so I, these are the ones I have left and I made, I made cards with them to show you using all the products from the Mosaic Mood Suite. The Mosaic Mood Suite, it has this really cool stamp set called Memorable Mosaic. And I used terracotta tile and soft suede and to, to, to stamp some of these sentiments. I used the thank you, all the pieces of your kindness make life more beautiful and Sending all happy wishes your way. It's a really good stamp set for the times we're in right now. All of the sentiments will work. Okay, furthermore, let's see what else. I have a punch. Let me show, um, show you the punch. This is the punch that coordinates with the suite. You can perfectly cut out your sentiments using what's called the timeless label punch. Okay, so those are the products I used. I used memorable mosaic stamp set, timeless label punch. And I used, in this case, this, this card here, a strip of, mo I used the, for this card, the, I'm gonna move my light away a little bit. So I have what's called Blushing Bride. Blushing Bride is one of the coordinating colors. Okay, I used then a piece of the Mosaic Mood. I'm just trying to kind of point that a little bit. I'm bending it because you, you need to see the shininess of this paper. Whenever I send this paper to someone, they're like, oh my God, it feels so cool. No matter if you're a touchy-feely person or not, I mean, look how cool that paper is. All right, so anyway, back to this. So I use soft suede. That's a color for stamping. I use the thank you, and you can notice it's all like in little pieces like a mosaic. I use terracotta tile for the flowers. And all I did to make this little layered sentiment, very simple, simply was cr crushed curry. I, used a p I just stamped in very vanilla and punched it out, and then I punched out a piece in crushed curry, just like this. I punched out a piece and then I cut it and split it up and pushed it off to the side so I'd have a little layer. 
This bird has a layer of crushed curry behind him. Okay, now I'm going to show you another sentiment. And the other sentiment is called sending all happy wishes your way. So for these two cards, these two cards I used terracotta tile to stamp this sentiment onto very vanilla cardstock. It's really a cool stamp because it's, it's sort of like the reverse. So if you stamp in terracotta tile, like you stamp it, then this, then the part that's not stamped is what you're actually seeing. So that's how you see the sending wishes your way. Let me just turn that so you can see the title. Okay, and um, what I did for this little bird here is I did terracotta tile. And terracotta tile is one of our in colors. That means that it's one of this year's five in colors. And we, so when you have in colors and you're using them, they give you all kinds of little accessories that you can buy for your in colors in, in our catalog. And these faceted gems, gemstones, which we still have available, because our catalog, like I said, is still good until June 2nd. These faceted gems are in terracotta tile and they were as part of a set and I used those to accent this. And I tried to do stamps in threes, but I did like three of these little little circles from this stamp set, and I did three little gems, and I think I had three of those little things that I used in mint macaron, the color mint macaron, but I covered one up with that. And then this is just a little offset of the bird, the hummingbird. Okay, so for this card, I used just the background. I just used the rose background. I didn't cut out the roses, so you might be wondering, what about the roses? I didn't try cutting them out, but I know it will work with the acetate trick I just taught you. It's just that I was using my roses as the background and popping up the hummingbird on top of the roses. I didn't feel like I needed to cut out the roses because of the way I was using these card backgrounds. So if you wanna cut out roses, please, by all means, I don't need to show you that because you just learned a technique that I hope my crafty friends will apply to whichever papers you have in your, in your collection. Okay, for the next three cards, I used the third sentiment from the set. So I used, so I've already showed you the thank you sentiment and I've shown you the uh, sen sending all happy wishes your way. And now I'd like to show you the all the pieces of kindness make life more beautiful. Now in one of my courses, I believe my online course was called, uh, let's see, it was called SDX125, I believe. In that course, I, I taught how to do this little technique here with the scan and cut. And, and what I taught in that course was how to take the word kindness when you have a stamp like this and just get it out of here. To just get, we just scanned it and we cut it out. Okay, so my crafty friends know how to cut stamped images, so you'll be able to do that yourself. And I think I, in that course I made some cards using this tree. I'm pretty sure. This tree is like a weeping willow. And this is a soft suede and mint macaron, just to show you. But anyway, I don't repeat the same things I did in my courses on my YouTube channel, but just know that that's how I got this. I cut out the word kindness using the scan and cut. I cut out the word kindness in Whisper White because I wanted it to pop out, not just pop out because it's on dimensionals, but I wanted it to pop away from the very vanilla. The very vanilla is a different sort of shade, so I wanted this sort of to come out. I also tried coloring it with markers, but it's smeared because the terracotta tile ink and the markers are the same type of ink, and so they sort of smeared together, and so I just left it empty, and I really like how this came out. So all the pieces of your kindness make life more beautiful. This is very good for people who are working to help keep us safe right now, healthcare workers, grocery store workers, anybody who's working to help keep us safe, this police and law enforcement, this is a good sentiment for, for them being so kind. Now what I did for this card, all I did was take one of the cards, one of the card bases, which are already gone, you know, the ones I showed you earlier, and this was, um, here, I have a little tiny piece of that paper here, I'll show you. So I had the card bases made of just this kind of paper, meaning it's just the plain, it's the, some of the sides, some of the sides of the specialty designer series paper are plain and some have little shinies on them. And this side that was plain, I thought, why not put a bird on it? Why not put a hummingbird over the plain part to make it and pop it up with dimensionals? So this one, I didn't want to give it a layer because I thought it's already kind of cool. Like there's the background with all these birds. And then here I popped one of them up. So I took a bird that was the same shape as the bird here behind it. And I hit it with the one that dimensionals. I mean, with a... I hit it with one that was a little shiny. Okay, now for this one, it is a card that I did the same background technique, the same punching technique, and then I used a terracotta tile bird centered on this one. Okay, very simple cards, and they're gonna be plain inside, just to write the little note. And then this one, I used this flower punch, and this flower punch I stamped in Blushing Bride. I put a little bit of 
uh, I don't know if we call it speckling or I forget the word, but when you put, when you just sort of touch the crushed curry to the middle of it, sort of, I wanted it to be like dots in the middle, like the middle of a flower. And I, this is from the perennial essence suite. We have, we have this flower punch and I, don't, I can't find it right now, but I, I punched this out of very vanilla. And to make the flower really pop, I put a circle. I, I cut out a circle with the scan and cut to put behind the flower to make it really pop off the card. And so I really like how, even though this card is so busy and, you, and you're like, there's a lot going on with the mosaic, this kind of then explains all the pieces of your kindness make life more beautiful. And you have everything in little pieces. And so there's, there's many more sentiments you could, even, you could even come up with, speaking of pieces. And, um, you know, I fall to pieces over you. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So I hope you enjoyed my six projects that I created using these hummingbirds. Um, there's a there's seventh one we just cut out, and I did have a couple more hummingbirds, but I don't know what happened to them now. But I, I have other you know things ready because I do things in assembly line fashion. So like I've already cut out extra sentiments, I've already cut out extra card bases, extra extra bird backgrounds, and things like that. Like here's a background, but not the bird. So there you are, there you have it. So now you know one more trick to to that you have up your sleeve for when you're cutting difficult patterned paper where the background does not have clear, well-defined images, then you can use this acetate trick to cut out really beautiful patterns and make layers. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. This is The Papered Chef.